Hey everyone, welcome to uh, my presentation for DevOps Summit 2023. Thanks to DevOps Summit for having me this year. Uh, we're going to be talking about where platform engineering and security meet, especially in DevSecOps uh, programs. So a quick disclaimer here, um, all thoughts, feelings, beliefs are my own. They do not reflect any of my employers. All right, and with that, uh, a very quick introduction here. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Nikki Robinson. I'm a security architect by day and a professor of practice uh, by night at Capital Technology University. Uh, I am also the assistant di director for the Center for Women in Cyber at CapTech, as well as an ICIT fellow. I recently wrote a book called Mind the Tech Gap. Uh, and uh, probably most importantly, I have a DSC in cybersecurity and a PhD in human factors. We're going to be talking just touch a little bit on human factors here and how it relates to platform engineering and security and where they all sort of blend together. All right, so for the, our agenda here, so I've got 30 minutes, so we're going to go kind of quick, um, but we're going to cover really what is platform engineering, what does it mean, what, it, it, this is a relatively new area that, that we're discussing as far as development and DevOps, uh, and then security engineering. Security engineering has really grown and changed over the last few years, so we're going to talk about what security engineering is, what does it mean to platform engineering then, what is platform security engineering, uh, and hopefully then really talking about what does that integration mean what does it look like in a DevSecOps program and hopefully some actionable takeaways uh, for for you um, and I encourage you if, if you have any questions afterwards or if you have anything that you'd like to discuss with me please connect with me on LinkedIn I'll have that up at the end of the presentation but uh, hopefully I can answer some questions up front all right let's get started all right so very quickly you know platform engineering this really started to become more, I would say, prevalent in the DevOps and DevSecOps community. A year or two years ago, there was really this need to help make developers' lives easier. We have so many tools and libraries and applications and our development environments are getting so complex and massive. They might be in one cloud environment. We're using infrastructure as code. We might have a multi-cloud. There might be two cloud providers where different development environments are spread out across multiple, or maybe that's done that way for high availability. Um, so platform engineering really became this way to help make developers' lives a little bit easier, to help consolidate tools and really address a lot of the issues with modern complex infrastructure. You know, as a security architect, the high complexity of cloud environments now makes it really difficult to secure these environments and to, and to run them you know, in a really quick way because running those security assessments, running those tools, uh, the SAST and DAST, and, and trying to make sure that those are all getting integrated into the DevOps pipeline, it can be really difficult to make sure that uh, everything is, be, is running smoothly. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about cognitive load, you know, this, this difficulty to manage so many different tools and libraries and have so many dashboards, and then you've got a security assessments and security stage gate reviews, and all these other components that have uh, occur really, you know, in these massive development environments. And as the complexity is growing, we have to figure out ways to help ease that burden. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk about, uh, of course, automation and augmenting, you know, what whatever is we can uh, with some automation. But one of the other ways that we can help sort of reduce that load and help identify potential problems and resolve them quickly is with platform engineering. Cognitive load is really, you know, the amount of information that we're taking in at one time. And there's only so much output that we can have based on that ingest of information, uh, just because we're humans and uh, that's how our brains work. So platform engineering is a, a possible way that can help sort of alleviate some of that load and building a platform that's easy to use for developers. So they don't have to try to go look for things in a million different directions. They can really you know, focus on the actual development work and focus on the testing of the code. Uh, that's, really, that's really where this comes into play and why human factors is so important to this. You know, Human factors is really this combination of psychology, engineering, and design for building really seamless and easy to use applications and, and environments. And bringing some of that into the development environment is really hopefully going to bring a very positive impact. And I, I know that in some, there were some studies 
uh, from Gartner that were saying that, you know, platform engineering is really a way to do that. It's a, it's a way to help developers and sort of reduce that burden of, you know, ad administrative overhead, the amount of um, functionality and operability concerns they have on top of security, which we'll talk about in a second. But it's one of these uh, additional components to, to sort of help developers and hopefully ease, um, you know, the amount of stress and, and burnout that they might be experiencing. So security engineering, I liked this image. I chose this image because sometimes security can feel like a very, you know, like a mesh, right? Like a, there, there's so many different pieces. There's incident response, there's identity and access management, there's network security, there's security architecture and, and design. And so the way that all of these different components work together, especially in a DevOps or DevSecOps environment is really important. So security engineering, here I took some examples from NIST, the cybersecurity framework, which is identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. That's really the bread and butter of you know, a security engineering program. This idea of continuous monitoring, uh, using that loop all the way from identify to recover, back to identify and recover. The whole pipe, the, the whole concept there being that you know, we're, we're able to iterate and continuously monitor these systems over time. And when it comes to large development environments, the amount of security that has to happen really quickly as part of security stage gate reviews, or maybe as part of regular testing and, and validation really needs to be, you know, I'm going to use the word, uh, it needs to be agile, but it needs to be continuous. The, this idea that it can integrate with the team instead of being this whole separate component. Uh, there's a another great NIST document. Obviously, I'm short on time. I can't cover all of it. But there's another great NIST document for the NIST 800-27 that I really like called Engineering Principles for IT Security. This outlines a number of different components on why engineering is so important in the security world. And again, we're going to get to why that's important for platform engineering. But this idea that Network network security is really, really important. That's a that's a massive part of the infrastructure and of, of course a part of that platform. And then reducing the attack surface. So I know that I'm gonna have to have some external facing components. How can I limit that? How can I make sure that there's an enhanced monitoring on those external facing assets, uh, remediating vulnerabilities, whatever it might be? How can I reduce the risk to any of our external facing assets and then essentially limit the blast radius? If someone's able to get in. How can I stop them? How can I make sure that they're not getting too far? How can I make sure that they're not, you know, getting into other systems, that there's some network segmentation in place, which is why that network engineering piece is just as important. Increasing resiliency. There's been this massive push in the industry, especially in cybersecurity for resiliency and for good reason. You know, resiliency solves a lot of problems or when you're building with resiliency in mind, it solves a lot of problems. It, it does solve for security, but it also solves for operations. In the event of a ransomware attack, you know, systems could be down for days, weeks, months. It just depends on how you know, mature the security program is and how much resiliency that, that organization had in place. You know, if there's uh, no way to bring the systems back online quickly, if there are no data backups, if there's nowhere to put the systems to bring them back online, it's really, really difficult. That's it's bad for the business. It's bad for the development environment. It's it's all around not not so not so good um, rep, for both reputation and revenue. So this idea that if we start to build resiliency into all of these the systems, right, we're helping to make sure that in the event that there is an incident or something happens, one again we limit the blast radius. Hopefully they don't get too far. But whatever systems are brought down, we can bring them back online and bring them back online securely and quickly. Uh, that's really the biggest thing about resiliency. I always mention this because I think people don't always talk about security. You know, we talk about the uh, the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Availability is a big component of security. If the systems are offline, they're not good to anybody. So uh, security and availability are, are massive components of why resiliency is so important. And then again, bringing back this idea of human factors, how can we build systems that are easy for people to use? They're easy to manage. You know, we're not doing a ton of manual tasks or manual patching. I always think of patch management. If if you can automate some of that, if you can automate reboots or reboot schedules, it takes that manual burden off of whoever is actually managing that environment. 
All right, so I'm going to introduce platform security engineering. There's some, there is some information out there about this, but because platform engineering is still sort of new, um, talking about integrating security into platform engineering is still, you know, becoming part of the conversation. So this idea that we can balance supporting developers and making sure that they have the tools, uh, the the everything that they need, their management environment. We can make sure that that is available for them. It's easy to use, but it's also secure because developers, administrators, uh, engineers, they all need secure platforms to work from. They need to be able to, you know, do what they need to do in a secure way. And uh, so if we're not considering security when we're building these platforms for developers, um, it could potentially open up holes or open up risk uh, that may be otherwise unknown. So. Uh, this concept of developer experience, DX. You know, there's a UX, UI, user experience, user uh, interface. This idea that, you know, this is really sort of adapting. You know, developers have a massive role in obviously building applications and then making sure that those environments are maintained, building in functions and features over time, uh, doing testing and validation, all of these components. And so we have to, you know, just like we would have a user experience, the developer's experience is just as important in making sure that, you know, it isn't this very cumbersome, you know, environment to manage and maintain. And I wanted to mention, this really isn't just about the technical components. We're not just talking about platform engineering from a technical component perspective. This is just as much about the collaboration, the integration of teams, the way that teams work together and operate together uh, is actually one of the reasons why I wrote the book because I felt like there wasn't a lot of literature. There's a lot of really great technical resources out there for, you know, how do you develop systems? Uh, how, how do you use Python? How can you best use Python? Um, so there's a lot of really great technical resources out there, but what I really wanted to do was talk about how teams work together because if the teams don't work together, if they can't communicate, collaborate, bring ideas to each other and talk to each other about what's really going on. Uh, it's really difficult for platform engineering to succeed because, you know, we need to understand what the developer experience is, but it's also going to be just as difficult for platform security engineering to uh, to really take off and, and, and work well. It's the same with that transition from DevOps to DevSecOps or integrating security somewhere in the pipeline. So that way it's not, you know, at the end, uh, right before the system is getting ready to go to production. So this idea that security can be integrated as a, you know, as a team member or a function of the platform engineering team to help still build a really great experience for developers, but make sure that those solutions are still, you know, incorporating, M incorporating MFA, that there's no shared secrets, things like that. So I, I think that the people aspect, the relationship building aspect, the unconscious bias aspect, all of those pieces are just as important as building the technical infrastructure in a specific way. So understanding how the developers are using the environment, how security can best integrate with them, what timelines work for people. You know, I, I always use this, the, the one example I have is, you know, if you have a security engineer that found maybe several vulnerabilities, and a vulnerability report gets sent at 5 p.m. on a Friday. Well, that's a bad day for everybody. That's a that's a stressful weekend. Might be working that night, or you know, versus, ooh, can I? I found them, but maybe I can wait and just schedule that report to go out 8 a.m. on Monday morning, unless it's something critical, of course, right? But if it's a regular security assessment, maybe scheduling that report to go out Monday at 8 a.m. instead of Friday at 5 o'clock, that could cause frustration, stress, anxiety, you know, between the team. Instead of saying, hey, you know, it's Monday morning, I didn't bother you this weekend, but, you know, here's what's going on, here's the results. So really working together and trying to figure out what works best for the team. So I always say, you know, it, it's got to be iterative, it's got to work over time, nothing is going to be perfect when it's first built, right? It's the, But it, the idea is that if the teams can start to communicate, they can start to figure out, okay, this is where our problems are, this is what we need to work on, or, hey, this is actually working really well, let's keep doing that. So that open communication, again, is just as important as whatever technical functionality and, and enhancements that you're actually putting into the platform. Okay, so 
what does this mean to DevSecOps uh, for platform security engineering? This it's a very similar idea, right? This idea that if you are building systems, if you're building applications, if you're building an infrastructure, that teams are working together to to solve a problem. Security can be involved to help build this platform for developers that helps them do their jobs securely. You know, when when uh, let's say there's a team of developers that are working on this code and they've got data, um, customer data in it or something, we would want to make sure that wherever that data is being handled, that it's just as secure, whether it's with the developers or it's in production code. Uh, because if the developer systems were compromised or this platform was compromised, an attacker might actually have access to that data, which would be just as bad as if it was in a production environment. Uh, you know, I get asked this question a lot, right? But do I have to secure dev just the same way that I would prod? And the answer is yes. Uh, and it's the same concept here that it, the idea is that if the systems were compromised, even if the code wasn't in production, but it was still accessible, you know, in this platform, how can we best secure this platform to make sure that uh, the developers feel safe putting whatever they need to to put in that environment? CISA has had a few uh, pa white, white papers and a few guidance uh, pieces of guidance that have come out recently around secure by design, secure by default. This idea that we can secure things by design. So when we're we're developing an application or a, or a product, that we're in inherently building in security from day one. This helps I, again for this perspective, this this uh, DevOps and you know platform engineering perspective. It really helps developers to again, feel secure in their environment to have a good place to work, but it also makes sure that whatever they're doing, they're doing securely. Um, and again, just like this idea of DevSecOps, this idea that there is a security component, whether it's a security person or a team of security that's there to help the, help the development team um, make sure that security is inherently built in. So this is a very similar idea to using secure by design, but I'm talking about it from the platform development perspective. So I was in IT operations for many years before I got into security, and it was always, you know, the administrator desktops, the, the administrator accounts, those are the ones that I'm always concerned with, right? If, if they get compromised, um, the actor essentially would have access to the keys to the kingdom. They could get in, they have administrator access to whatever I had, you know, servers, Active Directory, whatever it might be. The same concept here, right? If we can secure the platform, whatever tools, uh, information, data is in this actual platform is going to be just as secure and safe that developers know that they can move in this platform and do what they need to do um, and still be protected, uh, you know, without having to add security at the end. Uh, is really the idea here. And so the idea is taking this information to sort of take that first step and say, okay, what gaps exist in our environment? One, are we using platform engineering? Do we do? Are we considering having a platform engineering team? Uh, or, hey, we've actually integrated a, a platform engineer or we're starting to hire platform engineers as a team. Do we need to consider, like, do they have a security background? Do we need to hire someone with a security background? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're not at that stage yet. But the idea that you can sort of say, okay, this is where we're at today. Conduct my gap analysis. What are we missing? And then figure out how can I align this with the actual platform that I want to build? And I'll, uh, you know, again, hone in on the, it's not just how are we building, you know, what security controls or enhancements are we putting into place or what kind of network segmentation are we doing? That's all part of it. But the other is, if you have or are thinking about uh, building a platform engineering team, one, how does the platform engineering team work with the developers or are they sort of separate and siloed? How are they working together um, to design the developer experience? And then from the other perspective, do they have security experience to be able to, you know, really hone in and, and help them with this environment? All right, and so that takes us to our last slide here where I really want to hopefully bring everything that we talked about together into some final takeaways. One is, you know, this, this idea of platform engineering, this idea that tools can be consolidated, environments can be, you know, made easier to use for developers. So that way they have a really nice, you know, 
they're not experiencing cognitive overload. They're not having to deal with all this context switching of, you know, switching between application, application, environment, environment, environment. So that way they, ha they have sort of a seamless place to work. I see platform engineering as another really great way to, you know, help build human factors into a, to another space. Um, a lot of my research with human factors has been building human factors into the security space and the security engineering space. And I see just as much benefit as, as potentially building that into platform engineering where they're really working with the developer experience. Taking this idea of how do we build better systems for the humans that use them? In this case, it is developers and engineers. And so taking into account their experience every day, that doesn't just include, hey, they've got 15 tools, you know, we'd like to consolidate that, but what is their actual experience? Are there any tasks that take them maybe 10 times as long as it should just because they have to go through some crazy process to get there? Uh, this idea that, you know, that people talk about um, people process and technology as, you know, sort of, it's like, well, you have to have the people, then the process, and then the technology, but really it's about the integration of all those three components you know, the, the people are the developers, the process might be, you know, what are their CICD pipelines? What tools do they have built in? What kind of scanning are they doing? Uh, and then the technology being maybe the actual, the platform from the platform engineering team or the, the different tools that they're using. So the idea is that there's this harmonious integration of understanding the people that are using the systems, as well as the, you know, security engineers and platform engineers that are gonna to need to work together to make sure that whatever solution is created is secure by design and that there isn't an opportunity to potentially just create another vulnerable system um, and then potentially leave, you know, extraneous environments or other things available that that could be could potentially be additional risk. So this idea that a security engineering team can come in and make sure that they understand the attack surface. They understand what's going on in there, uh, what vulnerabilities exist, what type of scanning and continuous monitoring is in place, as well as incident preparedness. So they can come in and say, okay, we can build resiliency in because this environment might be vulnerable to these types of attacks or might be vulnerable to ransomware or something like that. So building these teams together early and often will help them to build that relationship, build that collaboration so that way you know, it's not, hey, we spent six months on this application and we want to, you know, push it to production and security says no. You know, they're involved from the beginning of as far as the platform engineering team so that when the development uh, teams are working in that platform, hopefully they're building securely. Um, but having that security team there, it always helps people to think, oh, man, I should think about security. Let me make sure I'm doing this the right way. Or, man, maybe I should run another test and make sure that that's, that's exactly what I was expecting. So. Um, my point mostly being it's good to integrate teams early and often and i always suggest you know having security engineers come in and meet whether it's the development team or the platform engineering team but having them get together and really start the conversation is the best way to identify potential risks earlier rather than later because the longer it takes to integrate the teams uh you know i see this too often where people wait or they don't do it and it's like they only come together when there's an incident so I say in preparation for a possible incident, and hopefully it never happens, right? But bring the teams together, have them talk to each other and have them really understand what these environments look like so that as the teams are getting integrated and they're potentially building this new platform or, or managing it over time, that there is some sort of continuous monitoring and some sort of uh, team, teamwork, you know, this, this, this idea of building these teams together uh, so that they can grow together and manage the environment together over time. Uh, I wanted to say a huge thank you to DevOps Summit for uh, for having me today and getting to talk about platform engineering and security engineering. I, I, I highly recommend if you haven't looked into platform engineering or platform security engineering to, uh, to take a look. I mentioned some good NIST guides, uh, but there's also some good, uh, this is some additional information out there specifically on platform engineering and the benefits of it. So, if you're considering it, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, if you have any questions or, or wanted to chat afterwards, uh, please find me on LinkedIn. That's where I spend most of my time. And I'd be happy to, happy to answer any questions there. Thank you so much and see you later.